What is going on, Fightful Faithful, and welcome back here to Fightful Scraps for another brand new interview. Today, we are joined by North Wrestling's owner, Andrew Bowers. How are you doing today, man? I'm all right, yeah. I'm not too bad. Uh, busy this week, um, but otherwise, yeah, good, good. Good, good to hear. And um, I, I want to start at the very beginning of North, of North Wrestling. Obviously, it's grown exponentially in uh, the eight years since the promotion was started in 2016 but uh what were the sequence of events what what led to you kind of start in north and how did it steamroll into what it is today yeah good question so i think it all started back in the day uh back in 2016 um i went to a wrestling show like a british wrestling show like that was essentially on my doorstep that's how lazy i was being and like probably how little i knew about uh british wrestling at that point i'd, I'd known bits uh, like in the early 2000s and kind of kind of tailed off a little bit around uh 20 yeah 20 like the 2010s mm-hmm. uh but it was a it was a wrestling promotion based up in north shields called um where i'm from called absolute wrestling mm-hmm. and it was class like to see the standard of what british wrestling was i was like i was really blown away by it so i don't like this is the story I always go back to as well. Like I've I've, I've come further in my career, but I, I was playing extreme warfare. I would always go back and play that, and I was I was really ill after seeing this show. Like I got tonsillitis, and I was just coming up to. I was in my late twenties. Like uh, oh no no, I was in my early thirties, and I was like, Whoa, I'm in bed, with tonsillitis. Just seeing this really cool British wrestling show. Um, they didn't want. Like I'd emailed them and been like. Hey, do you need any help at a show? Of which I now know how many emails promotions get that are, yeah. are along, along those lines. And they were like, no, we're fine, thanks. I was like, okay. <laughs> and I was like, sitting playing Extreme Warfare, and I was like, I should probably try this for real. Like, let's just start emailing people. And weirdly, Liam Slater was one of the first people I emailed, and he's still very uh, involved in the promotion now. And it kind of just snowballed from there. It's like... I emailed a couple of wrestlers. I realized that I had enough money to kind of pay them. I emailed a venue in Newcastle, which was uh, ICW had run a couple of shows there called the Riverside. And I was like, let's just see. And the guy managing that venue at the time, we got on well from the offset. And it just snowballed from there. And it was one of those things where it was like, oh, man, like, this has to happen now. <laughs> I've, committed, yeah. I've committed in. So, yeah, the first show we, we, had, um, we had Will Ospreay booked for it as well. Uh, and he had just won Best of the Super Juniors. So it was like, oh, man, this is going really well. We sold 160 tickets as well, um, which wasn't too bad for your first ever show. And then 12 hours before the show started, uh, well, 24 hours before the show started, Will Ospreay pulled out with an injury. I don't know. Since then, it's just gone from what that like really small beginning of, you know. And it wasn't just, you know, I've got a background in bands and music and, um, I'd put events on and things like that before. So it was kind of like turning my hand to a, a complete separate passion that I'd never really worked within. It just snowballed. And then, yeah, first show went pretty well. Second, third, fourth, not so well. <laughs> and then, yeah, now how, how we've got here today is a completely different story. But, um, yeah, it, pretty humble beginnings, I think. And you mentioned it there, obviously, Will pulling out of the first event, then you mentioned the second, third, and fourth event having issues. What were some of the early, the biggest early challenges that you did face in trying to grow North Wrestling and putting on these shows in the early days? Yeah, I think I think the first one was, you know, and yeah, you know, injuries happen, so this isn't on him, but like I think having having a big wrestler pull out of your first show, just British wrestling has that um reputation shall we say of people trying to pull a bait and switch or people trying to kind of like do people uh, do do an audience out of maybe what was advertised shall we say like so i think i think that was was difficult um i think uh the wrestling industry it's a tough one like margins are really slim like i always say like um there's not many theater shows that you go to where there's like an like amateur theater shows or like lower level theater shows where there's an 18 member cast or 26 member cast you know what i mean like yeah you pay all of that and then on top of that you've got like a film crew because you're going to put it on demand 
at the level of which we're doing it where 300 people come um maintaining ticket prices to be something that's affordable for people and profitable for for promoters like that that that's always been difficult so i think i think the early days because of that like really difficult you know, small profit margins it's a really competitive industry like especially when you're at a more of a local level and you can you don't have that reputation uh we've had posters ripped down we've had uh all that type of thing by other promotions and that was quite difficult to try and navigate but all i all i've ever tried to do is just do the best thing do the best promotion do the best wrestling show that we possibly can and try and ignore everything else that's going on to a point or ignore the negativity um and I think just keeping on going is 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 like has been the biggest challenge. I, I'm not back then. I was someone who really struggled with confidence and kind of <laughs> oh, oh, and of course, six months after we kind of announced that we were going to open the biggest wrestling promotion in Britain at that point, uh, WCPW or Defiant Wrestling, literally opened up in Newcastle, and we were like, and offered like another alter, uh, like another um, northern uh, promotion. Yeah, like a northern promotion, but it was trying to do a more adult based kind of promotion rather yeah. than doing your family friendly type thing. So, yeah, that was a huge one. You know, there was many a time I would come home from flyering shows or putting posters up or, uh, you know, all the like donkey work that I was doing at that point. And I went to my then girlfriend, now wife, like, I might just not do this anymore. <laughs> and I think, you know, she kept me going with it and just sticking with that kind of idea of uh of what north is i think that's probably been the biggest challenge is is is, is blocking out blocking out the haters <laughs> i can't believe i said that but yeah you know what i mean yeah fair fair and i i wanted to mention um just kind of the collaborations that north have done over the years and most recently uh in london all in weekend the all caps all day show that was uh, it was a joint kind of back to back to back uh, event with hustle wrestling attack wrestling and north wrestling uh what was that like for for you to kind of co-promote with the other promotions at, especially on such a hectic weekend in london yeah so so we've never worked with uh hustle or attack before the other collaboration show that we've done we did we went down and was a we've been a part of a tnt collaboration but that was very much just turning up and doing a match uh we worked with wxw as well which was br like a brilliant experience and um they've been super kind to us as well they invited over some of our um some of our crew to 16 carat to see how they run things behind this uh, behind the scenes like felix and felix has been great and mark shuttle uh who runs the production crew there was just just like proper good people who have, who have taught us a lot of things um I mean, like, just to kind of blend that into the first question, like, it's mad to say those things as well. Like, we, we, we've been able to kind of get access to those things. So our our experience of collaboration has always been pretty good. I've always been a bit worried about doing those types of things because I think, um, yeah, you've, you've got to be able to trust the people that you're doing it with. And I must say, like, Mark at Attack and Johnny at Hustle were just great to work with. Like, um, we all have very similar viewpoints on wrestling. Um you know and not to lift the curtain too much we just split everything we just was like let's just split all costs let's just split all profits um and that was like super refreshing uh to see uh two of the promoters just behave like that and i was like yeah great fine with me and then we've just we split all the workload you know some people did a lot more <laughs> than others i guess who those in london were able to do that but to work with those guys was like was great and like you know i, I was a fan of attack for such a long time um so yeah but the reality of the situation was uh the garage is an incredibly small venue and we had three full i mean we all we all ran about five or six shows each but pretty big rosters you know 15 to 18 people on each roster uh fitting into a space that can barely fit one roster was yeah super overwhelming <laughs> <laughs> when you got there it was like there's way more people here than i expected there to be i'm not the one who's like i guess when i go when i run an off show or when i'm at a progress show now with my, my new job there like i know everyone who's there yeah when you when you walk into a venue and you don't really know you know and to be honest because we didn't bring many people down from newcastle so i would say about 95 percent of the people that i didn't know i was like 
okay, this is a different uh, a different ball game. But everyone was brilliant and really friendly, and yeah, we had we 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 had a great time. And on the topic of collaboration, I will like obvi- I will obviously return back to North. Um, but you mentioned it there, pr- working with Progress as the head of creative. Yeah. How has that been for you to kind of you're you're uh, in in kind of just in in sticking with the theme of that? You're kind of just kind of head of creative of two promotions at the moment. Obviously, with Progress, I imagine you bounce things off Lee McIntyre a lot and the talent a lot. But what's that been like uh, uh, working with Progress so closely with creative? It's been it's been great, and I gotta say, like um, it's it's a really incredible thing to be able to say that like, I work like full time in wrestling give or take yeah there's yeah. a few odd side hustles on, that I, that aren't wrestling related just to but you know what it's like this, this yeah, economy yeah. man uh, but like for the most to be able to work in wrestling full time it's it is incredible and I, you know I'm super thankful for that opportunity um you know I work with I work very closely with the management team that I got there you know Lee Martin and James and then I work incredibly close with um the creative team there with Jack and Al and everybody's like Everybody's super talented, uh, super passionate. There's an incredible roster of wrestlers there, of which I know quite a lot of them already. And but there's a lot of people who I've been, um, I've got to know from working at Progress. And yeah, it's been you know it's up and down. These things are always difficult. There's there's challenges there, as everyone's quite aware of Progress. You know, there's there is quite a few a few challenges there. But I honestly took the job because of that challenge because. You know, I, I knew the wrestlers that worked there were were the, were brilliant. Like, like they used the best wrestlers in Britain, and so they should. Um, and yeah, it has been a challenge, and there's cha- there's a challenge still there. And you know, we're in a weird economical position, I think, in in the UK and well, the rest of the world as well. So, live events are taking a hit everywhere. So it's like it's up and down. Um, but it's super positive now. Mm-hmm. From from when I from the six months I've been there now, there's been a massive change in in everyone who's there, and we're really pulling together as a team again. And um, not that we weren't before, but like I think you can kind of we can start to feel that in the in the creative that's that's coming out, and yeah, everyone's just pulling in the same direction. And yeah, I've really enjoyed it. I've, re- I've really I really enjoyed the challenge. There's a I think there's more of a challenge to come as well, but you know. That is, there's more of a pressure working for progress. Let me just tell you that there's a little bit more at stake. So yeah. yeah. And so bringing it back to North, you've talked about this quite a bit already about the roster at North. And over the years, a lot of talent has come through and made and just made an impact. But a couple of people like Leon Slayer, like Joe Hendry, uh, like uh, like so Dan Maloney, have gone elsewhere, made a name for themselves in the in New Japan Pro Wrestling, in mm. TNA, in in WWE, in AEW, and they've come back and they've still competed in North. What does that mean to you to kind of have the, this talent? They've they've already they've they've gone on to this world stage, but they still remained with North. Like for example, Leon Slater, he's been mm. the North champion for over four hundred days. He signed with TNA. He was just on Victory Road, but he's always in the UK. He's always wrestling, and North has been his home even yeah. despite being signed. It's, I think, if, again, like, it's nice to have talked about, like, the, the early days at the start of this interview as well. It's like, because if you go back, and if I go back through, you know, the life of a promotion, you, you start, everyone looks at you with a little bit of trepidation and a bit like, all right, who are you? And that can happen for a little while. You've got to earn your stripes a bit. You've, and I completely understand why. You've got to show that you're trustworthy and that you kind of care about what you're doing. So to get to the point that we're a promotion that people want to come and work for, is like yeah it's it's a really lovely feeling but it's it's strange sometimes because i still sometimes feel like i've only just entered the industry and i think yeah. i think um you know leon and joe are probably the best examples that way you know and gabe kid comes back and you know like, like i said dan uh, trent seven people like that who i was just re- like we had mike bailey like who just all want to kind of work for this promotion in newcastle which was one of the big one of my big motivating factors was as someone who's from Newcastle, lived in Newcastle all my life. Uh, it, like, as wrestlers will always say, they get to like Sheffield and they're like, "Oh, we're nearly here," and I'm like, 
no, you're not. There's still another two and a half hours up the road. And it's, yeah, and like we feel sometimes a bit disconnected, like uh, geographically. So one of the big motivating factors I had was to actually bring wrestling to Newcastle and to you know my community and the people who live around here that we can be proud of, that can be just as um, well respected as any other promotion in on you know on the globe on the planet. And you know it's nice to say that we're kind of getting to that point where where people want to come and work for us, and it, it's quite simple why and it's because everybody who works on my show like and i mean you know to name check a few people it's like alex and kirsten oscar um all our videography team all of the guys who put the ring up like you know everybody to a person who works on the show um all the producers every, all the workers all the wrestlers everything everyone who works on it really really care about it and really really care about professional wrestling and we try and do stuff in a way that you know nobody has any ego when they come to north like I, it won't be allowed i wouldn't allow it but it wouldn't be me who didn't allow it it's just the culture doesn't allow for it mm. it's pro wrestling's fun like it's supposed to be this like mad flight of fancy that we're all taking a risk on like it's not supposed to be um something that feels like is a money making thing or is a job or um yeah it's supposed to be respected for what it is and it, it, and it is it takes you away from the mundane life for most of us that's why that's why we love wrestling it takes you away from that for a bit and if you're working on a show i still don't think i still think that's how you should feel i still feel like you should be able to come to the show and enjoy yourself so so i hope I, you know i hope I, you know our, our, our public image is going up and people want to be a part of that profile and but i know people like joe and people like leon just love working the show like love working with the team and i think that's probably the thing that i'm most proud of i would say absolutely something to be proud of and just sticking with the theme of the roster the talent and um, obviously you mentioned a few there who are standouts but mm. over the years obviously like i've said there's just been so much talent is there any talent that stood out to you personally that you feel has kind of gone under the radar a little with the with fans with kind of just even just fans in general in the uk worldwide someone who you feel like doesn't get the credit that they deserve yeah, um, there's two, and I think the well, there's the first two I would think of is Rory Coyle and Liam Slater. I think, um, I think they're both phenomenal wrestling minds, I think they're great entertainers, I think they're brilliant wrestlers, they're very, very different, um, to one another. And yeah, I think, I think when you see, especially with Liam, what he's doing at PPW now as a trainer. And what he's built there with Nathan Black, the guys, yeah, both of them are just brilliant. Look at what uh, Rory did with a lot of his promo videos, um, and kind of the way that he's built his brand and centered him, sent himself around storytelling. Like there isn't many people doing that, and I think I think this was the thing around the north and the northeast is, you know, I was I've always wanted to give a platform to people who were able to do that um to, to or to to operate at that level so them two definitely and then you know you look at like uh you look at like the landed gentry and and whilst they maybe their gimmick doesn't travel too far the talent should um will cruise uh i think he's brilliant like i think he just shown recently on, um on the noah tour that he can hang at that level um you know i say g money but then g money's everywhere like he's booked on every show yeah but do you know what I mean? But yeah, exactly. it's everywhere. Yeah, and then you've got like um, so one of the thing you know one thing that makes me really sad is that there isn't a lot of female talent from the northeast. There isn't any at yeah, all, yeah. and there hasn't that historically hasn't really been either. So what you've really had coming out is like um, the two biggest ones, Gia Adams and Little Miss Roxy, um, both moved out of the area now. Roxy doesn't live in the country, I don't, I don't believe doesn't wrestle anymore we, and we don't actually have anyone who is at the level at uh, that level uh, or been wrestling regularly so I've, i think that's a shame but if you look at um people who, like if you look at natalie sykes i think she's brilliant um i'd like to see her get out of the north again and become a national name uh eve bateman as well is somebody who's really finding their character um so yeah i think there's i mean i could go on like jet marshall 
uh, when he's not trying to break his own neck. Like uh, Joe Wade's great. Wade and Kessler were looking really good. Um, yeah. Uh, Henry Faust as well is doing really well. Like, so I think, uh, yeah, I had this. We, uh, we have this. We have a Patreon. We do a Q and A, and we had this question actually, where it was like, 2023 for us was like this massive year of growth. 2024, 2023. Does anyone ever say it like that? 2023 and <laughs> uh, 2024. Um, like we kind of like try to uh, build what we we currently had, and I would like to do a bit more building of talent in 2025 through through with with North. Actually, yeah. It would be nice to see see that. I think I think there's a lot of talent there. There, there absolutely is. And you mentioned there, and it was a question I was going to ask about um, about the, your championships, the lack of a women's championship, obviously. And you kind of just gave a little bit of an explanation there. But is that kind of the main reason why North doesn't have a distinctive women's championship? Because obviously we've seen Rio challenge for the main north belt as well so it is an intergender championship but has there ever been the idea of a women's championship and how close has it been to becoming a reality um honestly it hasn't um and not because we don't want a women's championship it's because we do uh it's gender neutral wrestling like you know i don't like the idea of uh, intergender either like i think we're at that point where not that i don't like it we just don't use it as much yeah I think like pre-pandemic in gender, it was like this really buzzy word that we all used. I think now we're past it where it's like, yeah, Rio and Emerson were our tag champs and it wasn't yeah. because they were male or female. It was because they were the best tag team at that point in time. And I don't think anyone could deny that. Um, and it's the same with, you know, Rio now is if I look at like the North championship and you've got Leon there, who I personally think pound for pound is the best British wrestler, uh, it currently uh, operating in Britain. Um, I don't, yeah, name aside from, you know, the people around that belt for us are Doris, mm -hmm. Rio, outside of that, you got Miles Kamen. But like, yeah. I don't go then, we've got, you know, a man in Doris and then a woman in Rio. Yeah. And Rio, so is, Rio is without a doubt one of the best wrestlers in Britain. Mm -hmm. Regardless of gender, I absolutely agree with that. She's a phenomenal that. talent. She's unbelievable. Right? And I think she won the NCL Cup in 2023. And even then, Rio was kind of on like on the up at that point. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what she's done with the Progress Women's Belt, what she's done with the ICW Women's Belt. Um, yeah, she she's easily one of our greatest talents at the minute. And I think I think we won't see her that much longer in places like north and progress and other places i think we'll see her across the pond but yeah so i think i i, I always get off track my point was is we haven't really thought about it. no the ncl cup mixed gender yeah. as well in that respect it's gender neutral um but yeah i think i think the sad the sad thing is the or the question that the question that comes in is like oh does that then restrict um female talent i think and if it does ever get to a point where that is restricting female talent because the pool is smaller then fine you know then we can we will we'll always look at that and we will always um talk with our female talent around that but at the minute i think it's working okay uh absolutely completely fair answer and while we are talking i'm just a one more personnel question for you because mm -hmm. he'd, be, he'd be a little bit disappointed if i didn't uh bring him up and um, so you've mentioned people backstage you mentioned talent and so on but someone who joined the north wrestling crew and who has been kind of the voice of north wrestling tom campbell as the ring announcer yeah. how has that been for you to have tom on board as part of north wrestling and just to see him kind of get these dates with progress and wos and so on after it, yeah it's great like tom is the best as everyone can imagine um but like yeah you know i saw tom announce uh the same show that I, I was talking about, the sort of absolute wrestling. I was like, oh, he's really good. Yeah, I think he'll fit the vibe. And yeah, he joined us when his pro. I mean, his profile in wrestling was smaller than it is now. But he, you know, he was a heart radio DJ. He was local. He was on the northeast radio around here, so he was well known. Um, but yeah, he's become as most people who work 
regularly at Norfolk Company. He's become a really good friend of mine. He emceed mine and my, uh, my mine and my wife's wedding, um, where we had wrestling. Which, was, of course, yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't my it wasn't my decision. I mean, obviously, it was it was helped along, but um, yeah, Tom Tom's a like to see him flourish. I mean, he does social media in a way that I could never do it. Like, he's just such a big, he's got such a big character. He's got such a big heart. Like, he's, um, people just absolutely love him. And I think, but I think he's been absolutely imperative in how we've cultivated what our community is and what our kind of, what the vibe to our shows are. And like, you know, we're all very, we understand that we're in the entertainment business. We're not necessarily in the wrestling business. We're, we're there as an alternative to a night out. We're there as an alternative to some other form of entertainment rather than just, now there are just, there are a big proportion of our audience that are wrestling fans to have someone like Tom MC that and, and, and host it all. Yeah. Just completely changes the complexion. I and mean, you would have seen that in London straight up yeah. what he's like, he's, um, yeah, he can change the atmosphere. Just like he could be as funny as out. You can have a you can have two people getting proposed, uh, getting engaged in the ring, and then you can have like a really serious main event between Leon Slater and Dan Maloney. And Tom can do all of that. So, yeah, he's he's super important to everything we're doing, and I'm I'm always so happy to see him succeed. Imagine so, and you've said that for a couple of people now, so. I, I do feel that uh, vibe from the nor- North and just North talent that I've sp- yeah. spoken to as well. It's kind of just one big happy family. Um, and I just want, before we, I want to, I want to talk to you about the uh, North being broadcast on UK TV. Obviously that's a big, big moment for the promotion and so on. But before we do get to that, I do want to talk about uh, your big event, uh, Thunderstruck 2. Yeah. Just an absolutely stacked card headlined by two, two men who just, who are North wrestling through and through Leon yeah. Slater and man like the reason nearly going 40 minutes in that main event. So for Thunderstruck true, what, what was that event like for you to run? Obviously Thunderstruck one was a big, uh, a big success as well, but it did feel like Thunder Thunderstruck two was the biggest event in North history at that time. Yeah, it definitely was. It was by um, some way as well. We, in terms of, in terms of production, in terms of um, I think in terms of the card as well. Um, I mean, saying that the first show, the Thunderstruck one had Gangrel, Scotty Tuarty, Joey Janela, and Mercedes Martinez on it. It was pretty. I was pretty proud of that one. But yeah, no, it felt like it was bigger. It felt like we promoted it harder. Um, it felt like, um, yeah, it felt like it, it was really special. I think we had like over eight hundred people. And look, I know there's promotions that have done more than that, but I think in 2024 to draw eight hundred people. You're not doing too bad. Um, it was a lot easier, like than the first one because we've done it before, and I'm so proud of the team that we've put together. That's the credit I will always take, and the only credit I can take is just bringing this team together. The rest of it, that's up to everybody else. Like all, you know, everyone else is just brilliant. Like, and the day ran really smoothly. Um, like at points a little concerningly so but um yeah it it was those shows are always a bit of a stress because they're the higher the higher costs so you know obviously you're bringing more in but there's just a little bit more at risk there's a little bit more that can go wrong um and finding talent to do those shows is just like it's an it's a it can be a real headache to get the logistics to work up and make sure that you're not going over budget and all of that. So when it's that successful and you have two of two guys that you, you know, have championed for so long, headline it in the way that they did, it's just, yeah, it's phenomenal. It's really, really amazing to see. Um, and, you know, I hope it, I hope it was a big thing for them to, to do. And I hope they remember it when they go on to do bigger and better and wilder things. And I did mention it there, and I want to just get your thoughts on it. Obviously, um, the North Wrestling it was on UK television. It was on uh, yeah. for people to see. It was the first time in a while that re- wrestling outside WWE and or AEW has been aired on UK television. So what did that mean to you as a fan, as a promoter, as just as someone involved in British wrestling to see that happen? 
yeah, it's amazing. Like, it's we we are in this really strange period where that, like you said, WWE and AEW feels like it's really booming back into the mainstream, mm-hmm. whereas the independent scene is probably not quite there. So, like, if you go back to like the days of um, like the Fight Network and like the Wrestling Channel and stuff like that, where you, you could access them now. We're we're just on free view at the minute, so you've got to have yeah, a free yeah. view set top box. So I'd love it. To, I'd love that to be able to become a bit more um, accessible as well. But it's a really, really good start to get back to that. It's a really good start um, to see that there's channels and there's people in that old form of media who are willing to take a bit of a chance on wrestling again. Like it can only be a good sign. It can only be a good sign for the industry. Like I've got a real strong like, um, I've got a real strong sense of like abundance. Like there's enough um, out there for all of us. Like, a, like the rising tide. Was it in the rising tide? You know, in a rising tide, all ships yeah. sail, or whatever the fuck it is. Like there's a, I, I believe in like a better British wrestling industry will just benefit everyone who's doing right, and I, ho- I hope there's. A, the start to it, Extreme Channel have been like so good to us. Like they've been really good to us. I'm hoping that it moves us through the next bit. We're always going to be looking for other ways to get in front of a mainstream audience and to kind of turn more people on to wrestling. Um, this is another one of them. You know, the only other wrestling promotion they've got on there at the minute is New Japan. Yeah. <laughs> so it is cool. It is cool. Um, yeah. But like I always say, as long as it sells tickets, like that's all I'm bothered about. Like that's what my job is—is is selling those tickets. Yeah. And just one final question. Obviously, you mentioned it a couple of times about uh, how being in the north there is a bit of a disconnection uh, with obviously fans in the south and with London being in the south and so on. There is there is that kind of gap. Is there more plans after all caps all day to kind of just to have more shows down south and kind of the kind of close that gap a little yeah definitely so like there's a lot happening or we're trying to get happening in the background um i think the next step up that we take is quite is the most difficult one um because you've you do have to outlay a little bit more you do have to take a little bit more risk it takes a little bit more time um we've got to think about how to do this without completely destroying us but we're in talks with a couple of venues in the north to do a few more shows outside of Newcastle. I'd love to do another show in London again. Um, yeah, I'd like to get a, around the country. There's a few opportunities that are probably going to come our way next year, um, which might make it a little bit easier for us to get out there. Um, yeah, so I'm looking by spring next year, it would be brilliant to have a few shows outside of uh, Newcastle um because that's all we ever get on social media is like you're too far away and i'd I'd love to come to the show but you're too far away and i'm like well yeah it's fair enough it is miles away instead of (laughs) um cheers for sitting down with me today andrew it's been a pleasure talking to you is there anything you want to obviously upcoming events for north uh where to find north on social media and where to find yourself yeah, so our next show is September 28th, and it's in Newcastle. It's Anarchy Brew Co. You can get all tickets at northwrestling.co.uk. All the links to social media are on there as well. So, you know, on Twitter, we're at north underscore NCL. Everywhere else is North Wrestling NCL. Uh, please give us a follow. Please give us a like. Come and have a look at our Patreon. Patreon's North Wrestling NCL as well. We've got behind the scenes stuff. We do Q&As. We try to do a little bit more. Uh, things there on our youtube we do um recaps we do monthly recap recaps of the last show with fraser porter from cultaholic uh they're called the rewind so you can see all the highlights of the show for free uh there yeah so please follow us uh please support us uh we'll hopefully be in a town near you soon that's a good go home line i never have a good go home line <laughs> Um, yeah guys with North Expanding make sure if you are in the UK uh, if there is an event near you make sure to check them out as we've said multiple times one of the uh, biggest growths of a promotion since its inception um, if you are new to Fight for Scraps guys make sure to hit that like subscribe comment down below which UK interviews you'd like to see more uh, on this channel and we'll see you all in the next one thanks for having us no problem